literally showing units getting ready to, to lease up. Somebody from the power company came by and identified that the electrical setup on the back, while it was all terminated properly and all the rest of it, they said that it was installed illegally with illegal material and literally they, they shut the power off at the whole building. property management companies because I know you, you I got remote. I got one so this company manages probably around a thousand units I probably got so in the Detroit market they probably got 350 units and I got half of that okay yeah yeah so it's one it's one company but they got a lot of uh a lot of bandwidth like several maintenance but teams country properties here? Or yeah, I'm only holding properties here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So my, my whole portfolio that I hold is here. Another market I'm looking at going into as far as holding. Um, I just, and, and I'm going to milk this cow dry. Like I ain't moving just because I can, right? It, it, it'll be time to when I'm ready to. So like some of these have funky layouts to where the, the kitchen was shoehorned up in a recess like this. So we just kept the same footprint and went back through and kept everything where it was at because it was just easier. Some of this stuff, like, you know, these old plaster walls, you start moving all of that around and you gotta get a structural engineer in there. So a lot of the time it's better to just leave the original footprint and just make it more aesthetically appealing. You know, were the cabinets already in here? Did you guys put these in? Here? So the the top cabinets were already there. Yeah, the lowers we put in. The so these are called shaker style cabinets. This is what y'all gonna be using in most of your rentals and flips. So I think in this particular case, we bought raw wood yeah. and then we painted everything the same color. Then we added door handles. I mean door knobs to make it a little more appealing. Yeah. That was Nene great. B, we gotta put, I'm like, Lenea. Then we, you know, the black, the little rust finishing too. Let's give it a little more appeal to it. I like that. So, the little things. And my man DeAndre, the contractor, the, the shorter, dark-skinned guy I was talking to, so he got a crew of Mexicans that's phenomenal. But Dre got, like, he got jacuzzis in his Airbnbs and the, you know what I'm saying, he that guy. So I'm like, Dre, you gotta remember where we at, man. You know what I'm saying? B, I got a good deal on the material, leave me alone. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm like, you do know we put that material in flips, right? He like, B, just leave me alone, man. Our people gonna be good. Like, all right, Dre. But it's good to have people that care like that though, because other contractors will literally just go and find a clearance rack and they'll put some stuff together. Like, bro, what made you do that though? You, you thought pink was in this season? They're, oh, well, you know, they had a, uh, you know, nah, you, you just tried to kill my budget, you know what I'm saying? And so. You know, just got to be conscious of who you're working with. Some people, you got to be very specific. These are the choices that we're going with. Other ones, like my man Dre, I trust him enough to know that he going to get the right stuff. He just also going to use the entire budget that he got because he going to get the, the, the nicest stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I can at least appreciate that as opposed to somebody that's going to try to skimp me and come in and put all this stuff together that don't make no sense. Exactly. So I would say initially... Keep tight reins on them. Tell them exactly what you want. And then once you grow more comfortable, you can get them more freedom to, to choose. You'll see how they piecemeal the floor and then the shower tile together. You see what I'm saying? So like, even though everything isn't the same, it all cohesively goes together. So that's what you want to look at when you start doing economy to scale. If you got a small footprint, you wouldn't do that, right? If it's a duplex, you would just keep it all consistent because there's enough material to service whatever it is that you're doing. You start doing economy to scale. Like, this is another 16 units over here. So, you know, time, quality, and cost, you could take inexpensive material with the right type of quality and execution and keep your cost low. So, quick story about this building, right? This building have been done since, well, as done as we can get it, since like, what, January of last, this year? Yes. 
right? Mm -hmm. So we bought it in, when I buy this thing? I think as soon as I got back from Greece. Okay, that sound about right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think as soon as I got back from Greece, mid-October, we closed it. We finished the rehab um, by December, January, right? We were getting ready, we were literally showing units, getting it ready to, to lease up. And somebody from the power company came by and identified that the electrical setup on the back, while it was all terminated properly and all the rest of it, they said that it was installed illegally with illegal material and literally they, they shut the power off at the whole building, right? So not only did it cost us forty, fifty thousand dollars to redo everything the way that they wanted us to do it, it all, they also kept the power off for what eight months? Just turned it turned back on. Right. So, literally, we done had a building that was ready to go, that's been sitting for seven, eight months before we could start renting it out. We just got our first tenant. So, and like you said, we're doing this to learn from you and some of the things that you did so that we don't have to spend that much money. Yeah. What are some of the things that we could do when we're looking at a property so that we don't have to end up in a... 1,000%. That's why I'm sharing it with y'all right now. So one of the things that... Now, mind you, like, I done paid for mentorship, right? All the above. The, the stuff that... And this is why our program... And I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm just telling y'all. This is why our program is different than everybody else's because we put the finite details that really matter. Like everybody could show you how to analyze a property. Everybody could tell you something about a 65, 70 percent rule. Everybody could tell you how to go and do a rehab. But in, until you get this nuance down, this is the kind of stuff that will put you out of business quickly. Right. So one of the things that we figured out now, mind you, we did private inspection. We did. Um, uh, uh, environmental, we did a survey, we did every checklist that you're supposed to do when buying a commercial multifamily building. But one of the things that they don't talk about that we have now learned and put inside of our apartment program is that you need to go down to the city and make sure that everything that was done on the building up to that point was permitted. That's a major key. Hey, hope you guys are enjoying the video. I'm gonna let you get back to it, but real quick, I will be remiss if I didn't give you an opportunity to join me at our next five day challenge where we are teaching people how to build six and seven figure businesses in real estate investing using other people's money. And if you didn't think that was enough, you get to spend an hour with me each one of those days during the five day challenge with live Q&A specifically to answer all those burning real estate questions that you've been curious about. Now, listen, all you got to do is click the link in the description. Join us on our next iFlip challenge. I look forward to meeting you guys there. And as promised, look, get back to the video. It's a major key. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is. It's just a major key. Calling the utility companies is not enough, right? You got to think we had power at the building. We had all of that, right? But you're thinking, oh, everything's good from perspective. But the previous owner knew somebody that knew somebody that was able to get the things needed to get going here. And there was things that were missing down at the city. So they completely disconnected the whole power line. Like cut it from the pole though. But there was nothing that we could do. They removed the meter banks that were back there because they said these are foreign meter banks, exact words, foreign. These are not ours. They took them out. So we went from having all these meter banks in the back, the globes to be exact, to having nothing. And they put a lock on it. What well, was the brand name? And mind you, we bought this building from, I think they were Argentina. I think, I think the previous owner was from Argentina. And then the one that we bought across the street, they were from France or Belgium. It's a lot, it's a lot of international investors that have been investing here for seven, eight years. Like, they've been hip. We had Shanghai investors we was selling turnkey properties to eight years ago. So they get on and they scour the internet they buy these deals remotely cheap enough and then they just hold them until somebody like me come by and that want to actually do the work. So what happened was the previous owner was doing work in here and they ran out of money. So they had to sell it. That's why we came in and bought it. So um, 
we got through the rehab quick. You know what I mean? We bought it in October, got straight to work. And like I said, we were done by December. We were literally showing units in January when they cut the power off. But because they cut the power off, then we had another issue because we knew that six of the units had um, something wrong with the SCR cable. That's like the main service cable. And so we couldn't troubleshoot the units because they cut the power off. So literally, like in the back of the building, there's the four back units. There's big trenches cut in the walls where we had to go and re-terminate all the main service coming in. But at the very same time, we now got our electrician finally to a point where he can go over there and finish those repairs. So it just caused a, a bottleneck for everything, you know what I mean, from one simple piece that just wasn't on the checklist, right? So, I mean, you only, it's a painful thing to accept, but I just understand I'm the first one to go through the door when it's a fire. That's been my role, you know what I'm saying? That is just what it is. And so um, I'm grateful for it because others don't have to endure it, you know, but that was, this was a painful one for us. Like me and Nene had some very uncomfortable conversations, um, you know, poor Nene, but I, I couldn't understand. I'm like, what they taught, the power was on. Like, I don't understand how y'all gonna cut it off. Y'all cut it on. They saw it different, so. That's good information though, because it's something that I wouldn't think about mm -mm. as going in as someone who has held the property. I'm buying it from them. They're foreign or mm -hmm. from another land and they come in. So if they don't check the code, they may come in and start doing some work based on their code. That's right. Globe Electric. That's right. So, I mean. That's right. I wouldn't, I've never would have thought about that. I'm, I had bought. You threw the name out there. Yeah. I'm familiar with some of their things. For like, sure. Overseas. For sure. <laughs> For sure. And, you know, I mean, mind you, I, up to this point, I had bought 100 units already. And they never ran into the problem. And so um, this, this was a new one for us. But we ain't going to make that mistake again. I promise you that. So, and then it's like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, we, we literally ran it all the way up. We got to the point we was talking to, like, the director of the power company or something. And um, y'all laughing, man. I'm telling you, it's been a thing. Like, your man been going through it. I was with city inspector. I talked to three of them, different ones, had their personal contact information. I think the great thing about it is, is, you know, letting them know that you're trying to resolve the problem. You know, we have a solution. We're just here to help, you know, improve the city get better units for um, better housing for the people in the city. And that really helped ultimately at the end of the day. Our biggest holdup was the utility company. It was not the city. The city actually, once we got everything, we was good, it was DTE. Yeah, and it's because they got a monopoly in the city now. It used to be back when I was younger, they had consumers and DTE in the city of Detroit. Now it's just DTE. So they know it's a monopoly, they, they you know, they got it on lock. They don't have to move and do nothing. It took for us to get that high up into the food chain and tell them what our mission is and what we're doing around the city to where finally we got some movement. But we literally had two or three different organizations that had six, seven people at a time that wanted to move in here and we could, we had no power. And they cut the gas. They did cut the gas. And then they couldn't cut the gas back on until the power was back on. <laughs> Let's go, let's go talk about something else, man. Let's go talk about something else. The good news is when I underwrite deals, and that's why I'm so anal about it, I always account for what ifs, not to this degree necessarily, but it was so much spread on the deal that the, 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 it, this thing's still gonna rain money, you know what I'm saying? But the process of getting here was just totally out of our control. So what, what was the conversation with the lenders, like your investors, what, what was that? Just Second. Second. clear or was it? Very clear, very, that's, that's why I was telling you about your situation. When you've done everything the right way and things still don't go the right way, that's an easy conversation for me. It's, I mean, it's a bad thing probably to receive, but it's a easier thing to deliver because it's like, I, 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 I checked the list. Yeah. That's what I did for a hundred other, like it's always worked mm -hmm. until it didn't, right? And so, um, yeah, they were very, open-minded understanding because they knew how quickly we had finished like we literally 90 days later after acquisition was done and um so and you know i had email chains and not that they need they asked for it but i had all of that if had they wanted to but that go back to doing business with people that 
right? Like doing business with the right kind of people to have a business mindset that understand that things happen in businesses outside of your control. You can't just deal with anybody willing to give you money because they don't all have a temperament in the stomach for when stuff like this happens. So it was finished in 90 days, but then it took eight months? Yeah, to get the power back home. A year later, still late. Yeah. Y'all got some tenants in here, though? Mm-hmm. We got, we, got, we, got, we got one in, and then we got another one that's moving in Friday this week. Okay. Um, so those, those are the people that we made the concessions for because we, yeah. Because we got those back six units, not at the power back on, that the electrician started on next week to get those figured out. So is that something that you would recommend as far as like, if you're gonna hold property, just hold in one specific area or is that just what you prefer to do? Uh, so for me, I know how hard it is to build out like a good property management company. So that's why, I'm more of a creature, of ha I'm a creature of habit anyway. Like, I've been with the same wife, I've been, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, when things work, I just like them to keep working. So, I know how long it takes to kind of galvanize the right, like we started with a different property management company that we had to fire, and then when, when we got the one now, and we still work through wrinkles, but they hard in the right place. And they take action on the stuff we talk about. And so that's all I could ask for. Um, and they're reasonably priced as well, so, uh, that's that's the predominant piece is that I just like the cohesiveness that we have as a team. And so, yeah, I want to buy as much under that umbrella as possible because that's one fixed variable that I don't really have to worry about. Now, if you buy smaller units, you know, you could have some odds and ends here and there. I think when you, because like these are businesses every time you buy one of these apartment buildings, right? So I just, I look at that a little bit different. 